Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the role of glycine receptors in hyperecplexia. Okay, so glycine receptors and hyperecplexia is the topic for this video. Glycine receptors and hyperecplexia. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by discussing glycine receptors first and uh, then what we'll do is we'll move on to hyperecplexia and don't worry I'll tell you exactly what the symptoms of hyperecplexia are and we'll look at uh, how glycine receptors are involved in producing those symptoms and everything will hopefully uh, fit into a nice picture. So we'll start off with uh, looking at the structure of the neurotransmitter glycine. Uh, then we'll look at the role of glycine in uh, inhibitory neurotransmission within the spinal cord, uh, particularly, but also the brain stem within the brain. Okay. Uh, then we'll look at uh, the structure of a glycine receptor, and then we'll look at hyperplexia. We'll look at the uh, signs and symptoms of hyperplexia, and then we'll look at um, how a certain mutation in uh, a glycine receptor subunit can lead to hyperplexia, uh, and uh, we'll discuss why it's so deadly. And finally, we'll discuss that there are different mutations in this same glycine receptor subunit which can lead to hyperplexia, and how some of them are dominant and some of them are recessive, and we'll discuss why that is, the logic behind that. Okay, so we'll start off with the neurotransmitter that's the star of this show, basically, which is glycine. Now, glycine is a uh, proteinergic amino acid, so here is the amino group here, okay, and then we have the alpha carbon coming off here, and then we also have this carboxylic acid group also coming off the alpha carbon in the centre there, okay, and then off the alpha carbon we have a hydrogen, so this is the core amino acid structure for all proteinergic amino acids. And in the case of glycine, it's the simplest of all the proteinergic amino acids because the R group is simply a hydrogen there. So this is the structure of the amino acid glycine. Okay, now this is used in proteins, but it's also used as an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord and also in the brainstem. Okay, so let's have a uh, little bit of a reminder of the structure of the spinal cord and we'll see um, the role of glycine as an inhibitory neurotransmitter within the spinal cord. Okay, so where should I draw a picture of the spinal cord? I uh, will draw it here. Right, okay, so let me do this. So the spinal cord, we're looking at a transverse section of the spinal cord, okay? And it comes around sort of like an oval shape of the spinal cord. Um, so there is a front of the spinal cord, the so-called ventral aspect of the spinal cord, which is this side here, and then there is a back of the spinal cord, the so-called dorsal aspect. Now, in the ventral aspect, you have a very um, obvious fissure here, whereas the suture, uh, well, this is a suture rather than a fissure that you have at the bottom here. Okay, right. So, um, uh, oh, sorry, not a suture. What am I talking about? A sulcus. Uh, a suture is something that, you know, uh, you suture up a wound. Sorry. Um, so, let me uh, draw the grey matter of the spinal cord. So, you then have... Um, the grey matter of the spinal cord in this sort of butterfly-like shape here. So here is the grey matter here, and it comes out like here, okay? And it's symmetric on this side. So the spinal cord consists of both white matter and grey matter, and the white matter is where you have the axons of the neurons, and the grey matter is where you have the cell bodies of the neurons. So this portion in the centre here, this is the grey matter of the spinal cord. So let me label a few things up here. So, this here, this uh, not suture, instead a sulcus, this is known as the dorsal median sulcus of the spinal cord. So this is the dorsal median Sulcus. Okay, right. Uh, then um, this here at the front, this crack that you've got in the front, this is known as the ventral 
median fissure. Okay, so the ventral median fissure. Now, you then have uh, the gray matter divided into two portions. Uh, this here, this uh, process coming off ventrally, this is known as a ventral horn, and obviously you have two ventral horns. So you have a left ventral horn and a right ventral horn here. So this is the right ventral horn specifically, but I'll just label it up as a ventral horn. In fact, I will put right there. Right ventral horn. Because remember, this is the back of the spinal cord, and this is the front of the spinal cord. So if you imagine your person, uh, this is the left side of the person, this is the right side of the person here. Okay, uh, then um, this here is known as the dorsal uh, horn. So specifically, this is the right dorsal horn, and this will be the left dorsal horn. Okay, so... Since I've labelled up on this side, what I will do is I'll show uh, the nerves coming out on the left side. But of course it will be symmetric on both sides. So you'll have two large neurons coming out, basically. Well, sorry, two large nerves coming out, the roots, basically. Then you'll have the large dorsal root ganglia here. Okay. And then this will merge here with a neuron, uh, well, a nerve, sorry, not a neuron, that comes out from the ventral aspect here, and the two merge together to make a mixed spinal nerve. Okay, so, basically, in this nerve here, which is known as the dorsal root, okay, so this is the dorsal spinal root, dorsal spinal root, this contains all of the sensory neurons. So all of the neurons going into the spinal cord come in through this dorsal spinal root here. So uh, neurons carrying uh, pressure information, temperature information, all sorts of sensory information will be coming in through this dorsal root here, this dorsal spinal root. And the cell bodies of the sensory neuron are neurons that are coming in are all in this Mm, uh, this um, bulge here, which is known as the dorsal root ganglion. So this is the dorsal root ganglion. So a ganglion is a name for uh, cell bodies of neurons which are outside of the central nervous system. So they're outside of the brain and the spinal cord. So remember, the central nervous system is not just the brain, it's also the spinal cord. So any cell bodies that are outside the uh, spinal cord and the brain, they form these um, masses here. So you'll have loads of cell bodies. This isn't just one cell body. It's absolutely loads of cell bodies all together, and they're called a ganglion. And this is the, called the dorsal root ganglion because it's the ganglion of the dorsal spinal root. Okay, so basically all the sensory nerves come in through this mixed spinal nerve here. So this is the mixed spinal nerve because it contains both motor and sensory fibers. And then all the sensory ones go this way and then they're going into the central nervous system. They have their cell bodies here and then they have another process going into uh, the central nervous system. And all of the motor neurons which are coming out of the central nervous system, they come out in this uh, ventral spinal root, and then they join the mixed spinal nerve here. Okay, so this is the mixed spinal nerve. Okay, and you'll have a, the exact opposite on this side. You'll have the same thing, so the mirror image of this over here. And finally, this one here. This is carrying loads of motor neurons, which are coming out of the spinal cord. These motor neurons will have their cell bodies in the ventral horn here, and they'll be sending their axons out through this um, ventral spinal root here into the mixed uh, spinal nerve, and then it will be going off to innervate some muscle. So this is the ventral spinal root. Okay, right. So, uh, that's a nice, um, that's nice because we've now got our uh, alpha motor neuron here, which is actually going to be the star of the show because the glycine receptors are going to be on this alpha motor neuron. So I might just highlight him in because he's so important. So, he, in fact, not in orange because the orange one smudges. I'll do it in blue. Okay, so in blue here, this is our uh, spinal, uh, well, our alpha motor neuron that's going to go and innovate some. Um, uh, skeletal muscle cell. 
right, and I might just highlight his body in as well. Okay, so we'll continue our discussion of the spinal cord, just to add a few little bits more into the anatomy. Uh, you have the central canal of the spinal cord here, so this here is a little hole running in the middle of the spinal cord, uh, which contains cerebrospinal fluid, so this is the central canal. Okay, and then a bit of terminology then. Uh, so, you have these uh, pieces of grey matter that run anteriorly and posteriorly uh, to the uh, central canal. So, these are known as commissures. Okay, so this little strip of grey matter that runs behind the central canal is known as the posterior grey commissure. So, this is the posterior or dorsal also, posterior grey commissure. So posterior and dorsal mean effectively the same thing. Uh, they both mean back. Then you've got this little strip of grey matter running in front of the central canal, and you might be able to guess what that's called. What's the opposite of posterior? It's in front of the uh, central canal, so it's going to be either the ventral or also the anterior which means the same thing as ventral, anterior, uh, grey commissure. Okay. Commissure. And then finally, you'll see that you also have a little strip of white matter running in front of this central canal. A little strip here, which is wedged between the um, anterior grey commissure here, and then uh, the ventral median fissure here. And that little uh, strip of white matter there is known as the uh, anterior white commissure. Okay, so this is the anterior white commissure. Right, so there's a little bit more terminology to add in. Okay, and now let's talk about the white matter columns. So, um, we talked about the fact that we have the dorsal horns and the ventral horns uh, for the grey matter, but now let's divide up the white matter as well. So, this portion of white matter right at the back here, these make up the dorsal columns. So you have two dorsal columns. The one that I've highlighted is specifically the right dorsal column, okay, but you also have the left dorsal column over there. So this is the right dorsal white matter column, or just often referred to as the right dorsal column. And this carries axons from sensory neurons up to the brain. So right dorsal column. Okay, and then uh, over here we have some uh, white uh, white matter on this other side of the um, uh, grey matter here, and these are split into two portions. So where should I draw this? I think it's probably best to draw it on this side. So this first bit, which I'm highlighting in green here, this is the lateral white matter column. So in green. This is the lateral column. Again, this is the right lateral column. So this is the lateral white matter column. And again, this carries a huge number of axons, some of which are going up to the brain. So some of them are sensory axons, which are coming in. Um, well, actually, the axons generally from the primary sensory neurons, they actually generally synapse onto another neuron, which has its cell body in the grey matter, and then that neuron goes into the lateral column. Whereas in the case of the dorsal columns, they actually generally carry the axons directly from the primary uh, sensory neurons, which have their cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglia. However, the point is that you've got axons running up to the brain, and you've also got axons coming down from the brain, which will be synapsing on uh, motor neurons. Okay, so this is the lateral column here, and now, finally, in turquoise, this portion here, this is the anterior white matter column, and where am I going to squash that in? Um, I'll just write it, and I won't be able to actually put the arrow in, just because it's making, it'll make a mess if I do. So that, that's the in turquoise, this is the anterior white matter column, and again, it's specifically the right uh, anterior column that I've shown there. So I will colour code it instead, so I'll underline it in turquoise so that uh, it's obvious that that's meant to be the turquoise one. Okay, right, so 
what this is a nice little revision of anatomy of the spinal cord, but uh, what's the role of glycine in all of this? Well, we see that we have this alpha motor neuron here, which has its cell body in the ventral horn and is sending its axon out into the ventral root um, and then into the mixed spinal nerve to go off to some skeletal muscle cell. And I might just add this into the picture over here. So let's say we've got here a skeletal myofiber. Okay, and here comes our axon down here to innovate our skeletal muscle fiber. Okay, and I'll just complete it in in blue, like so. Right, so glycine has a role in inhibiting these alpha motor neurons, and we'll continue this video in the we'll continue this discussion in the next video.